Today we're going to talk about monohybrid Punnett squares. Mono means one, therefore one allele is going to be passed down by the parent and it will have either a dominant or a recessive type trait to it. There is total dominance if it has a capital letter. So here we have two parents. There's one parent. There's another parent. This parent has a tall gene and a short gene. I'm sorry, allele. This parent has a tall allele and a short allele. They could pass down either one. It just depends on uh, what happens during fertilization. So usually you put the male of the organisms on the top and the female on the side although it really doesn't matter, but that's just what most people do. Okay, so in this square right here, you're going to pull down this allele and pull across this allele. So in this square, it would be a capital T, capital T. Yep. Now let's look at this square. We would pull this big T over and this small t down. What would be in this next box? If you said big T, little t, you are correct. And what about this last box? What is going to be in that last box? If you said little t, little t, you are correct. Okay, so this parent, what would this parent look like? Its genotype is big T, little t, but what would its phenotype be? What would its physical appearance be? Tall. How about this mother? The mother, big T, little t. If you said tall, you're correct. Now let's look at the offspring. If they were to have, let's say these are pea plants, they have lots of offspring. Let's say they have 100 babies, okay? So the more babies they have, the more it will come out to the actual percentages that we're looking for. These squares, these are just possibilities. So it is possible for this parent to give a big T and this parent to give a big T it is possible for the this parent to give a little t and this parent to give a big t, but will they always do it this way? No. Um, could they all come out as babies that have big t's? Sure. But the more children or offspring that they have, the harder that to come out that way. Just like a family full of boys, it's a little tough to get that. Um, usually it's pretty equal of boys to girls in a family. So what percentage of these offspring are going to be tall? Well, we look, okay, if these four squares make up 100% of their offspring, what percent will come out with big T, big T? 25% would come out with that. 25% would come out with in this box. 25% would come out in this box and 25% would come out here. So that means what percent total would be big T, big T? If you said 25%, you're right. What percentage would come out as big T, little t? Now remember, you've got two boxes that have these. So what percentage of the offspring would have that big T, little t? 50%. And then what if we were looking at only the ones that have two little t's? What percentage of the offspring would have two little t's? 25% again. Okay, so what about if we were looking, that would be the genotype, remember? What if we wanted to look at the phenotype of the babies? The phenotype means what they look like. 
So how many of these, what percentage would be tall? If they have a big T, it's gonna be in the tall range. So there's 25% here, 25% here, 25% here. So 75% of these offspring would be tall. If it only has little t's, they're going to be short. Because remember, big t's are dominant, and they're going to overshadow the little t's if they're in there. So what percentage are going to be short? 25%. Okay, so what percent will be tall? We said 70%, 75%. What percentage will be short? 